Hi, my name is John. I'm trying these videos out again. I've really wanted to do them for a while and figure out what I want to do. And I'm going to make a video about why I want to go back to YouTube and doing some YouTube videos. But I was just talking to Grant Arthur, a friend of mine that does YouTube videos that I talk to on Facebook and uh, on some of the YouTube videos that he posts and some of his live stuff. And he was saying, just make content. And that's really about all I can do. I have kids and I'm with them all the time and I have, uh, and I work all the time. So pretty much so my life's dedicated to them, but I do need an outlet and talk about stuff and I'll get into a video about that later. Today I wanted to talk about a song called, oh, and another thing I got to tell you guys is I'm dyslexic. So I'll forget things in a second. I misuse words, uh, I forget songs that I've known. I forget albums that I've known. So when I'm talking about music, which is what this video is about, is about music. Uh, it's very easy for me to stray away or, you know, just forget things about certain things that I knew or certain things that other people may be very common to them to know and that I just don't understand or, or I don't understand at the time that I'm filming or at the time I'm talking to people or whatnot. So, and this is a way to get into it and get reacquainted with doing some YouTube videos. So the name of the song is Say It Ain't So by Weezer. I picked this song because it's probably my favorite power pop song of all time. Now, I may do a video about what is power pop, what it is to me. Um, really off the top of my head, and I was just thinking about this before I did this video, the only two bands that I can really come up with off the top of my head that are power pop is Weezer and Cheap Trick. I got to thinking, I know some people call Ben Folds and Ben Folds 5 uh, power pop, but I, I don't know. There's not a lot of guitar in that, so... And when I was and I was talking to Grant Arthur earlier, uh, you know, I was asking him, what do you think about the blackout period uh, of of uh, Alice Cooper? And Alice Cooper had a period when he had about three or four albums that I thought may have been power pop. But he says, no, nah, he doesn't really consider it, but he sees how it could. And we may talk about that blackout period later, too, because those three or four albums by uh, Alice Cooper that are in his blackout period, I actually really like. They were critically panned and a lot of people don't like those. Uh, but I, I, I personally do. So this song, Say It Ain't So by Weezer, I think it's on the Blue album, and I know their hits pretty well, uh, Undone, uh, Buddy Holly, songs like that. I, I know them pretty well. I, I think I've listened to some of their albums. I forget. I'm dyslexic. I forget about those things. I mean, I think I've had quite a few of them. Uh, they were popular. I grew, I'm a 90s kid, and they were popular when I was when I was growing up. They had music videos and that type of thing. And I, and I don't know that I was... I was more into the grunge stuff then, maybe. So I don't know that... It, it, the Weezer really grabbed me. They seemed kind of preppy and all that other stuff. I don't, I don't know. But I knew that the songs were catchy, and I knew that I liked the songs. But to actually advertise that I liked a band like that was... Not, not really what I was into. Say It Ain't So, song by Weezer. So, uh, it also, I was watching a video by Darren Locke yesterday, and he was going through the lyrics of songs and trying to uh, deconstruct them. I can't deconstruct lyrics very well because I'm dyslexic, but I can tell you kind of what they mean to me. I'm not a lyrics guy. I don't really like lyrics. The lyrics could say anything. They could say something I didn't even believe or something that I didn't believe in. Uh, and I would still jam out to that because the lyrics mean very, the, the feel of the lyrics. Yes, the, definitely the sound of the music and where it takes me is what I associate that song with. So I might hear, hear a song and, and it may be a universal song about love, uh, being and falling in love. And I might think about going to the beach. I might be thinking about somebody in my family. It may, that song may not have that much of reason to me because I really just don't pay a whole lot of attention to lyrics. Lyrics is maybe 1% of, of any song that I, I, or any part of the song that I really affiliate that song with. So say it ain't so by Weezer. And he was going by, uh, he was, I may have just said this, but he was talking about the lyrics in the song and trying to deconstruct them. And, and I would like to deconstruct the song in general. But another thing, too, is I'm not going to sit here and uh, listen to the song over and over again and come on YouTube and come and talk about it. Uh, I heard this song. I have it on a playlist. Somebody, and I, and I heard it yesterday when I was taking my son out to eat. And it's it's a really good song. And 
uh, last week, somebody played it at work, and I play it sometimes. I've got it on a couple different Spotify playlists that I use, and it's one of those that you can really sing to. It's it's got a, it's got its highs and lows. It's kind of easy to understand. It's uh, it's on key in a way that doesn't really stray away from the key or or doesn't do a lot of uh, you know ups and downs in the voice where they make it vibrate. Really easy song to sing. And it's got parts where it is down and then it really goes up. It really shoots up. And I think people, with the with the way that the lyrics are constructed and the way that the music feels, I think people really like that. But it's a very popular song. I know when I'm at work, I work with younger guys, and people know this. People really do know this. Um, it sounds to me like it's in a major mode. It's it's hard for me to tell. A lot of times I confuse major with minor. I'm a guitar player, not a very good guitar player, but I have studied modes, and it does sound like a major mode to me. But honestly, when I really think about it subconsciously, it almost sounds like a minor mode. I I get very confused with uh, major and minor and how songs feel and all that, and and I don't have a problem with that. I feel like that when I listen to music and I feel like music sounds a certain way or does things a certain way, I feel like that is the meaning of it to me may feel minor because minor to me is sad and major is happy, but major a lot of times feels very sad to me. Um, and I think this is in a major mode. And I think that this uh, is, uh, I think that it, it feels sad, even though it's major. And when you can do that, like for instance, the song Free Bird, that's a sad song, but I think it's in G major. I think I think it's a, a very a very mellow sounding sad song, or the beginning of it at least. But it's it's in a major mode. So go figure. The way music works is 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 amazing. So it has a bridge. It has a really good bridge to it, and I like to talk about bridges because. It really, it, in a song, oh, it's also five minutes long, which is a little long for a pop song, a little long for a radio song. So when you have a song with a with a good bridge, it really adds something to the song, gives it a little extra, we're coming out of this and going back in, and, and it really raises the chorus and the lyrics and things like that. And I'm sure to uh, people that are listening to this, I think they know what I, know what I mean when I say that. So... Uh, he, like I said, Darren Locke yesterday was going through the lyrics and he, and he was doing it to a song that I love called looking for someone by Genesis off album trespass. And there's not a whole lot to the lyrics here. It's the song. When I, when I've read the lyrics, the song conveys to me, uh, a lost loved one, uh, you know, someone that they lost. And that's kind of what it seems like to me, lyrically, what the song's about. Um, and we'll, we'll just break this down point by point. And it is power pop. So, and I think this genre of music holds to having cheesy lyrics, maybe on purpose, maybe not on purpose, but it works. It, it does that a lot for, uh, for, for power pop. Some pop songs, if it has... A lot of songs that have a genre to them, power pop, shoegaze, that you you can get away with having. Um, you can get away with having cheesy lyrics, and they may not even seem cheesy to the people that listen to them. It may, it may make some kind of sense. It may have some kind of ethos to them, if that makes any sense. Starts out, oh yeah, all right. So you know, oh yeah. All right, and it's got that guitar part that just sounds really good, you know, just kind of just very much tickling the strings and going slow and making it sound a little not bluesy, but giving you a blues feel. Uh, somebody's hiney is crowding my icebox. Somebody's cold one is giving me chills. Guess I'll just close my eyes. Somebody's hiney, how often do you hear the word hiney? Uh, you you get you get what he's trying to mean about that of buttocks, but m maybe not. It, it it is power pop. Crowding my icebox, someone he's cold one is giving me chills. It's already giving me the vibe that maybe this has something to do with getting drunk or drinking, and it'll, it'll and and it'll talk more about that as the lyrics go on. And somebody's cold one, a beer is giving me chills, maybe or maybe a cold gaze, maybe something like that, maybe. 
uh, duality of meanings. Uh, guess I'll close my eyes. Guess I'll just close my eyes. Uh, that is a very big motif within music and poetry, closing your eyes and imagine something or closing your eyes to get away from something. Oh, yeah, all right, feels good inside. And it goes back to that, oh, yeah, all right, feels good inside. And then it gets to some, inter the, they've got a couple interesting words here, and I like the way this sounds. Flip on the telly, wrestle with Jimmy, and the way he sings it. Flip on the telly, wrestle with Jimmy. And then it goes into something is bubbling behind my back. The bottle is ready to blow. So back to the drinking motif, the alcohol motif. And the word telly, that's, this, this is an American band, but I associate the word telly with, uh, with British, with uh, across the pond type, uh, a, a saying from across the pond. But flip on the telly would mean flip on the television, turn on the television. Wrestle with Jimmy, have no idea what that means. Maybe it's a maybe it's Jim Bean. Maybe it's some kind of alcohol. Maybe it's just a friend of his. Maybe he's talking with him. Maybe wrestling means talking. It could mean a number of different things. Something is bubbling behind my back. The bottle is ready to blow. I feel like this probably has a dual meaning. Uh, I'm about to blow because of something that's going on with my loved one. But at the same time, the bottle will blow. Of A bottle of alcohol will blow. Say it ain't so, it, it, okay, so now it's going into the heavy part. It's really low, and then it's, say it ain't so, your drug is a heartbreaker. I always thought that that word was love, and I always interpreted that heartbreaker. Um, I always interpreted that word as love. Like I said, I'm dyslexic, so I can hear words differently. Your drug is a heartbreaker. And that word heartbreaker, I've always associated that with the song Heartbreaker by Led Zeppelin. So when I went, that is a uh, instant subconscious association that comes to my mind a lot of times when I hear this song. And sometimes I think about it like that. Say it ain't so, my love is a life taker. So taking somebody's life, I'm, I'm sure that means taking something from somebody, making them feel empty because of their love or what they did with their love, took it away from them. So now they feel empty. I can't confront you, I never could do, that which might hurt you, to try and be cool. I always thought they said, so try and be cool, which I think I think that part sounds really neat. I think, so try and be cool seems neat, like you're trying to be cool in front of a, another person uh, to not blow your top, so to say. I can't confront you, I never could do, it's hard to confront this person, that which might, I never could do, that which might hurt you. It, you don't want to hurt, he doesn't want to hurt that certain individual. When I say this water slide away from me that takes her further every day, so be cool. So that's the part where he says, so be cool. So it ain't so, say it ain't so, your drug is a heartbreaker. Say it ain't so, my life is a love take, my love is a love taker. Now it goes into the bridge. And it sounds like it changes modes. It sounds like it's going from major to minor, minor to major. That's the way it sounds like to me. Now, it may be changing keys for that certain amount of time. Maybe it's probably lasts about maybe 25, 30 seconds, the bridge and the song. Dear Daddy, I write you in spite of years and silence. You've cleaned up, found Jesus. It sounds like somebody that's quitting drinking. Things are good, or so I hear. This bottle of, of Stevens, which has got to be a kind of alcohol, awake, awakens ancient feelings. I always thought that word was demons. I didn't know it was feelings. Like father, steps father, the son is drowning in the flood. Yeah, yeah. Well, when it gets to that point, it makes me think of, uh, it, it kind of moves. So it may be thinking of, it may be talking about his family. That's what it sounds like to me. He's talking about a father, a stepfather, his family. And then it gets, and then it goes back to the beginning. So I, I think the reason I like this song is it's, it's very catchy. It's very up and down, very heavy. It's very nice. Uh, they did a good job with the guitar work. They good, they did a good job making you feel something when you hear it. And, and I think that, that that is very important with the context of the song. 
don't listen to a whole lot of Weezer. I know I like this song. I know I like some of their other songs very much. I'm sure I've heard a couple of their albums all the way through. And I appreciate their music. I know it's mostly Rivers Cuomo. They always had that preppy look and that preppy kind of attitude towards their music, which I don't know if I liked it or disliked it. It's been so long. But I do feel like this, and I wanted to start this video off with probably my favorite power pop song of all time. Now, there may be something that I'm missing, something that I'm forgetting about, a band I'm forgetting about with a lot of songs, but I really do appreciate this song a lot. It, it's, uh, it just sounds really good. And that's all I've got to say. I've got more videos coming up, and I'll figure out what I want to name this, and I'll figure out what I want to do with this um, as time goes on. If anybody's watching this, appreciate your time.